Hi, my name is Maureen Peters, and I'm Curator of History at The Rooms, Provincial Museum, Archives, and Art Gallery in St. John's, Newfoundland. I am here today to do a project to show you about the history of Newfoundland Labrador, and to do a project you can do at home with some things that you can find. Um, everything I used here for this project I found in um, St. John's, so it's easy to be able to, to get. And it is a project dealing with sailcloth and oil skins. So oil skins are what we know as what the fishermen would wear in order to protect themselves from um, the, the rain and the wet and when they were out fishing. And what you most commonly would know on oil skins, besides a heavy jacket, of course, is Southwestern. Now this is a Southwestern that I made myself last week. I made it out of cotton duct, which is a cloth that I got here in St. John's at the Fabricville. And if you're interested in this pattern, I can have it made into a PDF and post it on our, on our Facebook and Instagram and that for people to download to be able to make themselves. It's a very simple hat. What this is not done though, it is not oil skinned yet or waxed. So what that process would entail is mixing uh, either beeswax and linseed oil, which is called flaxseed oil. This came from Sobeys and this came from Bulk Burn. And uh, linseed oil is from the flax plant or the linen plant. And beeswax as well, it's wax, is what it is. So this would be added to this fabric and that would make it waterproof. You might think about when you think about oil skins as you see in the images, is that it's black or like a dark brown color. And that's because when you add linseed and beeswax, to a light fabric, it turns it yellow, so they just made it black. It was also a part of the processing um, for, so that it wouldn't turn yellow and also, you know, it wouldn't stain and whatnot. So what I will do by the end of this is have waxed this that western and made it into a rain hat for myself. It also makes a good hat for the gardening because it also comes down over your neck for sunburns. And if you really want to be inventive, you can add um, some orange oil or lemon oil, uh, citronella oil to the waxing process in this and then it would of course also keep off flies and other insects. So this is the bigger project. But what I'm gonna do is take the technology and explain to you why we, why we um, developed this technology in order to create something much simpler that you can do at home, which would be waxed paper. Uh, this is a commercial made beeswax paper and what this is good for is this is what you would use nowadays if you wanted to as opposed to saran wrap in order to keep your food. So I'll show you an example of that after the fact. So these are simply pieces of cotton, again from the fabric fill here in St. John's, um, that I double turned and sewed, you can see, and then I added beeswax and linseed oil to them in order to make a wrapper for food. So like if you're going to cover this, put in the fridge. The wax acts as a seal and molds around it. So then your bowl is then covered. You can use this for apples, you can use this for sandwiches. Uh, people make sandwich uh, envelopes and wax them so you just put your sandwich in. And it cuts down on using plastic it's all natural, so it doesn't damage your food. So what is oil cloth? Oil cloth is cloth, usually cotton duct, that was used in sales, that was then oiled. Because you see, when you have cloth, like this cotton, and it has um, wind going through it, you can just breathe through it, and the wind would go right through. So, if, so early mariners figured that when cloth was wet, it was more efficient of the blow through but it caught more wind so what happened was that the ships would go across much faster because the water would fill the air holes in the cotton weave and would catch the wind much more efficiently i have a fan here to show you what i mean so this is <clears throat> wet cloth you can see how it does still catch quite a bit of wind but the cotton that is not wet, it's completely horizontal in the wind. Now I have some examples here of oil cloth, or wax cloth, 
And when they are held up against the wind, they are even less. They are more hardy against the wind. And what that does is that's the ability for the wind to catch in the sail to get the ships across much faster. Beeswax creates the cloth to be very, very, very brittle. As you can see here, you can fold it up and it will maintain its shape. Whereas oil cloth doesn't do it as, as easily. It comes apart and doesn't, it doesn't maintain those crisp lines that you get with wax cloth. So the oil cloth is a bit more fluid than the wax cloth, but the wax cloth um, was, is more waterproof. So you're gonna have to decide what size you want. These are quite small. Um, this commercial one is also quite small. It's more for over glasses or over stuff like that. Um, I made these a couple years ago now. Um, I gave them as Christmas gifts one here, and I made them a bit bigger uh, to cover bowls and to cover stuff like that. You can also make sandwich envelopes and wax those too to make them waterproof. Uh, it's really a just a now natural replacement for your plastic. So you got your fabric, you got your oils, your beeswax. You want to put it on this but you're going to put it in the oven in order to melt the beeswax into the fabric. Uh, you can preheat your oven only to about 200 to 250 at maximum. Um, you don't need very much to melt it. And um, you can finish the fabric or not. What first you're going to do is you're going to uh, take your beeswax and you're going to grate it. So I'm going to do that and get back to you. So I've got this bar of beeswax completely grated. Well, not obviously not this one, but I have one completely grated. So it creates quite a bit of wax, especially since the cloth that we're going to be waxing is not that big. And I also took some of the flaxseed oil, flax oil, and put it into this bowl. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a bit of those beeswax to the oil. And the main reason for using the, um, the oil is so that the fabric doesn't get too stiff. If you want a stiff, you know, you could definitely use uh, just the beeswax. I'm also going to turn my oven on. 200 degrees and let that warm up. It doesn't take very long for it to get to 200. So I'm just smooshing it all up. Both beeswax and flax oil are good for your skin so don't worry about getting it in your on your hands. And I also use the smallest part of the, the great side that there that's the smallest. Now the problem with also using this is that the grater is probably going to be toast or that side will be toast after after doing this because you can't really reuse it. It really clogs up the grater. Um, you might be able to get it out with boiling water or put it in the oven because it is metal and let it drip down. I'm going to try that after this because that is my only grater. I'm going to add a bit more. Get all that. You can see all that is smushed up. Probably use a tablespoon of the flax oil. This is what I have left of that piece of beeswax that I couldn't get without hurting my fingers. So now we have this ready. This is washed and it is finished on the edges. Uh, if you have a serger, um, you could also just serge around the edge of this. I just chose to double, to double, uh, double, sew the the edging with my cute little. Valentine's Day fabric I had left over from Valentine's this year. So I'm going to move the camera so that you can see this on the, the uh, cookie sheet with the wax paper. So in order to do this, I had to get kind of creative with my uh, camera. So it's pointing down. So all I'm going to do is take this beeswax and flax oil and I'm going to just kind of distribute it over the, um, the fabric. So I just do that. It's all sticky in the hands. Pay special attention to the corners 
and don't use it all at once. So you don't want to use all of this because this is actually going to be quite thick. So you're going to put it in the oven, let it melt a bit into the fabric, and then we're going to take it out again, add a bit more, take it out again, add a bit more. And we're going to do that a couple of times. And there's going to be probably a pool of oil and beeswax at the bottom of on the parchment paper. So I'm just going to continue doing that. Um, really kind of get in the corners there because they're important. And yeah, so I'll just kind of do that. And then I'm going to take this now and I'm going to put it in the oven. There it is in the oven and the um, beeswax and the oil is melting into the fabric. So here we have the cotton duck Southwester and it is almost done. You can see some spots where the oil and the uh, linseed oil and beeswax haven't quite fully waterproofed it. This took me probably an hour and a half to get all the uh, beeswax and the linseed oil worked into this. So now I'm going to complete it. So I got my pen and the hat and my beeswax and linseed oil mixture here. And I'm just going to take the areas that have the um, obviously no beeswax and that on it. And I'm just going to put some more into onto the uh, sections. I'm also going to work, I, uh, I did take a big section of beeswax and put it onto the top where all the seams meet at the very top of the cap. And that's just to make sure that when water falls on that, that it will be waterproof. So, and you can see through the coloring of the through the coloring that this is why you kind of would want it to um, to dye it black or some other color while you were um, as opposed to have this kind of ugly yellow color. Here you can see the cap that's in the oven and I'm just going to close the door and let all that beeswax and linseed oil soak into the cotton. The cotton is very porous. The oven's not on very hot but the cotton is very porous so it will just uh, melt right into that cotton and absorb it all. Uh, when you take it out of, the, out of the oven, when it dries, it will be waterproof. All right, so now it's all melted into the hat. As you can see, the hat almost looks kind of wet with it. Again, it's not a really hot, super hot oven, so. I have no problem touching it, but I've been crafting for so long, I barely have feeling left in my fingers either way. So you can see there, and I also made a special point to put beeswax and oil along the seams of the hat uh, at the top. Uh, and um, so that, that's where the uh, water would hit, it wouldn't seep through. That's where you're going to have any leakage to make sure that it's waterproof. So that's it. This is now a waterproof Southwestern in the back that I will test out Friday when it's supposed to absolutely pour rain down here and uh, see if it works on my when I take the dog out for a walk on Friday. So there you have it. And from this old technology that we have been using for hundreds and hundreds of years in the fishery in Newfoundland comes new uses in how to make uh, food wrappers to save on plastic and to help the environment and not have so much waste uh, and a number of different forms. So you can see how we can take old technology and uh, old concepts and how we can adapt them for use today. So again, my name is Maureen Peters and I'm Curator of History at The Rooms. I am out of the office currently, but if you have any questions, you can email me at mpeters, that's M-P-E-T-E-R-S, at therooms.ca.
And you can also comment below uh, in the meantime, and any of the comments should be forwarded to me with any questions. And if you do want the pattern for how to make a Southwestern, I can uh, put together a pattern to have it in PDF format or in another format so that you could print it off and make your own Southwestern if you are interested. And I can also include instructions on how to waterproof it. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope everybody's staying safe and staying home and that we can offer you some more content on how uh, on the history of Newfoundland and Labrador going forward and I hope that you enjoy it. Please comment below. Thank you.